Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K. And uh, today is our continuous class on the eyeball anatomy, part 3. We will be discussing about the nervous cord of eyeball that is nothing but the retina. So the retina is the innermost tunic or the layer of the eyeball which is very thin, delicate and transparent membrane and it is the most highly developed tissue of the eye which receives the light impulses and it is converted into nerve impulses and that's how we see an image. It appears purplish red due to the visual purple of the roots and the underlying vascular choroid. So we'll be discussing later about what is roots and you already know about the vascular choroid that we have discussed in the middle cord. So here we have a representation of the layers where we have three coats, the outer fibrous coat represented by the white line, then the middle vascular coat represented by the brownish black layer and the inner coat that is the nervous coat or the retina and that will be adherent to the vascular coat here. Here I have detached a part of it to show the separation between them. So there are three coats. We have discussed about the fibrous coat and vascular coat in the previous classes. And today we are concentrating only on the nervous coat of eyeball. So the gross anatomy of retina, it extends, the extent of the retina is from the optic disc to the aura serrata with a surface area of about 266 millimeter square and the retina is thickest in the peripapillary region and thinnest at the aura serrata. You might be having a doubt what is aura serrata even in the last class we haven't explained much about it. So today we will be discussing it in the following slides. So let's see it later and grossly the retina has been divided into two parts. One is the posterior pole and the peripheral retina and they are separated by the retinal equator. So it's very easy to remember. The retina is divided into two parts, the posterior pole and the peripheral retina which is separated by the retinal equator. So here we have a representation where you can see the posterior pole represented by the red colored area, the peripheral retina represented by the blue colored area which is thin and the junction of these two is termed to be the retinal equator. So there are two parts the posterior pole and the peripheral retina and which are demarcated separated by the retinal equator and the peripheral retina ends at the aura serrata. The posterior pole refers to the area of the retina posterior to the retinal equator and the posterior pole of the retina includes two distinct areas. One is the optic disc and the other one is macula lutea. So these two are very important to remember. So the first one the optic disc it is a pink colored well defined vertically oval area and the optic disc it all the retinal layers terminate at the optic disc except the nerve fibers. So the layers of retina we will be discussing later and at that time you will come to know that it is consisting of 10 layers and all these layers except the nerve fiber layer will be terminating at the optic disc while the nerve fibers will be continuing to the optic nerve and the optic disc thus represents the beginning of the optic nerve and thus by it is referred to as the optic nerve head and the depression seen in the disc is called as physiological cup so in the middle of the disc there is a depression and that depression is termed as the physiological cup where the central retinal artery and vein emerges. So that is the importance of optic disc and the macula lutea otherwise known as the yellow spot. It is comparatively deeper red than the surrounding fundus 
and it is about 5.5 mm in diameter and the fovea centralis is a central depressed part of the macula it is about 1.5 mm in diameter and that is termed to be the most sensitive part of the retina so the retina's most sensitive part is the fovea centralis present within the macula lutea that is the yellow spot so this most sensitive part is 1.5 mm in diameter then the second part of the retina that is the peripheral retina the peripheral retina refers to the area bounded posteriorly by the retinal equator and anteriorly by the ora serrata so the part that extends between ora serrata and the retinal equator that we have seen in the previous representation that blue colored area was the peripheral retina and the ora serrata that is the serrated peripheral margin where the retina ends so the retina is extending anteriorly and it terminates at this point where it becomes serrated here the retina is firmly attached both to the vitreous and the choroid and the pars plana extends anteriorly from the ora serrata so in the previous class about the middle cord we have discussed about pars plicata and pars plana and that pars plana is extending anteriorly from the ora serrata so that clears the topic about the parts of retina so now let's see the microscopic structure of the retina where i have told earlier about the 10 layers of retina so these 10 layers are again arranged into two dif- distinct functional components so functionally it is divided into two parts that is the pigment epithelium where the chemical reaction is happening so here is the pigment epithelium and the neurosensory retina which converts and transmits this particular impulses formed by the chemical reaction in the pigment epithelium so these are the two functional components one is pigment epithelium and the other one is neurosensory retina so now let's see each layers so here we can see the 10 layers of retina starting from the first one that is the pigment epithelium this is a thin single layer of cells that is a pigment epithelium then the layer of rods and cones we'll be further discussing about the explanations don't worry so this this is the rods and cones the layer of rods and cones and there is a white membrane that is not white in color i have just represented with the white line here that is the outer limiting membrane then there is a layer of nuclei that is the outer nuclear layer then the outer plexiform layer where there is connection between these two neurons and inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer the ganglionic cells the nerve fibers and the internal limiting membrane so these are the 10 layers of retina the pigment epithelium the layer of rods and cones outer limiting membrane outer nuclear layer outer plexiform layer inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer the ganglionic cell layer the nerve fibers layer and the internal limiting membrane so these are the 10 layers of retina so this each layers you have to write a short description about each of them so the first one that is the pigment epithelium that is the outermost layer of retina a single layer of pigmented cells adherent to the underlying basal lamina or the bruch membrane we have discussed that in the previous class about the middle cord so that is about the pigment epithelium 
where the layer of rods and cones also known as the photoreceptor layer so these are the photoreceptors where one is helping in the photopic vision and the other one is helping in the dim light vision so there are about 120 million rods and 6.5 million cones in our eye so here you can see the representation this is the pigment layer the first two layers this is the outermost layer that is the pigment layer then the layer of rods and cones external limiting membrane then you can see the further layers that we are not considering right now we are only discussing about the pigment epithelium rods and cone cells then the third layer that is the external limiting membrane it is a fenestrated membrane through which passes the processes of the rods and cones and the outer nuclear layer it consists of the nuclei of the rods and cones it's very easy to remember pigment epithelium the layer of rods and cones then the processes of the rods and cones will penetrate or passes through the fenestrated membrane that is the external limiting membrane then there are the nuclei of the rods and cones then the outer plexiform layer it consists of the connections of rod spherules and the cone pedicles with the dendrites of the bipolar cells outer plexiform layer is the connections so here you can see it rods and cones here is the external limiting membrane which is allowing the passage of the processes of rods and cones and here you have the nuclei of rods and cones and they are the outer nuclear layer then the outer plexiform layer where there are connections between this processes of rods and cones with that of the bipolar cells so i repeat the third layer is external limiting membrane the outer nuclear layer and the outer plexiform layer and let's go to the sixth layer that is the inner nuclear layer it mainly consists of the cell bodies of the bipolar cells so we have seen the bipolar cells in the previous diagrams so the nuclei of the bipolar cells will be located in the inner nuclear layer then there is inner plexiform layer it essentially consists of connections between the axons of bipolar cells and the dendrites of the ganglionic cells so obviously there will be the next layer that is the ganglionic cell layer it contains the cell bodies of the ganglion cells so here they are these are the bipolar cells and uh, there is the inner nuclear layer where the nuclei of the bipolar cells are located then the inner plexiform layer where they are just connections between the ganglionic cell dendrites and the axons of the bipolar cells so this area is the inner plexiform layer and here you can see the ganglionic cells and that is the ganglionic cell layer and the ninth layer is the nerve fiber layer or the stratum opticum consisting of the axons of the ganglionic cells which passes through the lamina cribrosa to form the optic nerve so it's very important to remember the nerve fiber layer is consisting of the axons of ganglionic cells which will be passing through the lamina cribrosa to form the optic nerve and the internal limiting membrane it is the innermost layer and separates the retina from the vitreous so it's the last layer of the retina that is the internal limiting membrane which is separating the retina from the vitreous chamber so these are the 10 layers of retina that you have to remember so let's repeat the 10 layers the first one was the pigment epithelial layer then the layer of rods and cones the external limiting membrane then the outer nuclear layer outer plexiform layer then the inner nuclear layer inner plexiform layer then 
the ganglionic cell layer, the nerve fibers layer, then the external internal limiting membrane layer. So these are the 10 layers of the retina when we are looking into it in the microscopic view. Thank you.